If you have missed my presentation from Pixar's Random Man Arts and Science Fair, you are in luck because today I will be showing you what I was presenting. It was mainly about the new Substance Painter plugin for Random Man, which is a very great addition to your tool set. I will first show you how to create a few materials using Substance Painter and then I will go through the export process using Random Man's new plugin. And after that, we'll be diving into Houdini where I'm showing you how to use the Random Man plugin to get your materials in and assign into your objects to get a really good rendered result. Make sure to subscribe to my channel because I will be doing way more random man tutorials in the future so make sure to have that notification bell turned on to get more updates frequently. The first thing I want to do is create a new layer, call it spinner and assign it to a custom material ID. Then I adjust a few shader parameters like roughness and color and head over to the shader settings to enable subsurface scattering. Then I'm creating a new layer for the teapot's body. It will be a very dark material, so I'm choosing a very black albedo color. And for the specular roughness, I'm picking up a nice texture map to break up the roughness. On top of that, I'm also plugging in a procedural high frequency noise map to break up the surface using bump parameters. Now let's continue to the paint job. I'm first isolating the nozzle of the teapot and giving it a nice orange color. Then I'm enabling paint symmetry and starting to draw in the flames. Using anchor points and blur mask techniques, I'm able to create a nice outline around the flame. After that, I'm then colorizing the flame itself and the outline. For the final look, I'm adjusting the roughness and also adding some breakup through the diffuse color so we have some nice um, paint effect on it. Before showing off the new Random Man plugin, I first want to create one more material, which is um, a smart material, Iron Forged Old, which I'm dropping onto the teapot and then further refining it with custom masks. First up, I'm disabling all the layers and starting from the bottom to refine the first metal material and adjust the roughness accordingly. In the third layer, I'm adjusting the mask builder texture size to add a little bit more detail. On top of that, I'm adding a new fill mask to the dirt layer to add additional smudge and um, fingerprint effects, which I still have to scale to get a realistic size. To really make this metal pop, I'm creating a new matte finish on top of my layer stack to create this nice grungy used up look. On top of that, I'm adding an edge breakup to break up the edges to get a more used look of the metal. For the final step, let's add the subsurface scattering onto the spinner and then we are done with this metal material. As soon as you install the Random Man plugin for Substance Painter, you will see that you get this nice blue R logo on your toolbar on the right. Once you click on it, you will see the preset browser you know and love from other DCCs like Houdini and Maya. You will have all the standard shader balls, libraries and everything in here. You can add or create new libraries in here or you can view other ones you have previously installed. So I will head over to the custom library slot here and you can see I already have a few materials exported with this uh, new plugin. Before we export a material to the preset manager, it is very important to set up a few things beforehand. So the first thing you want to set is your texture resolution, which will be set for your export here. I am choosing 4096. Also, what is important when you create your new project, if you decide to use UDIMS or the UV workflow, um, this will be baked into the exported texture maps. So if you're using a UV workflow and you export a material that will be UV based, and if you use a UDIM based workflow, the file paths will have the UDIM tags appended. So now let's make good use of this new plugin and export our flame material here. All you have to do is click that little shader ball with that plus icon and you get the create new material dialog. It is very straightforward and not a few things to set up because it's a, almost a one-click solution. So all you have to do is give it a nice asset name, let's just call it Flame Teapot. You can change the author name, the version, and you can pick the thumbnail preview option. You have the default one, you've got a fur one, none. And then in the Substance Painter options, you can choose which BXDF export you want to use. You have a few to pick. You've got the Llama Shading Network, the Pixar Surface Network, and the Disney Shading Network. For this presentation, I will be exporting a Llama Shading Network, and you can also pick color configurations. Um, you can just disable it all together, use ASUS 1.2, Filmic, Blender, or your custom OCO environment variable. On top of that, you can add metadata, any custom things you want to do, key value pairing, and you can just hit plus to create new ones. 
And then all you have to do to finalize this uh, material, you just hit save and it will start exporting this material. As soon as the material is exported, you will see you get a new thumbnail and with that little L icon in the corner, which represents a Llama shading network. You can also see we have the S for the Pixar Surface Shading Network. And this is all you have to do with the plugin. So you export your materials from Substance Painter. And now let's jump into Houdini and I will show you how you get everything into Houdini or into Maya and how to work with that. All right, so now we are in Houdini and the first thing you want to do is create a new window tab and make sure you pick the RenderMan preset browser. And once you open that, you will see it's very familiar to the one you have in, in Substance Painter. And all you have to do to bring in any material in Houdini is you select the shader ball in the grid view. And all you have to do is then double click it and you will see that it will bring it into the material context and it will have the flame teapot name as we specified from Substance Painter. Now let's jump inside and have a look at the generated Llama network. The resulting Llama network generates several Llama nodes which help to set up the metallic roughness workflow from Substance Painter. As you can see here, we start in loading in the textures, we convert it to a Pixar metallic workflow, and then we create a Llama diffuse load, Llama SSS, and um, Llama conductor, which get all added together and then driven by a mixed parameter. On top of that, we add a dielectric, which helps to cr uh, create a code layer. And towards the end of the shading network, we also have a displacement slot. And all it comes down to is two shaders plugged into the output collect to generate your shader. So now let's have a look and see how this renders compared to Substance Painter. And the resulting render looks like the one in Substance Painter. And the beauty of the plugin is that once you export your materials, you do not need to worry about color conversions. It automatically generates the TEX files, which is used by RenderMan. So all the color spaces are set up correctly. All you have to do is import the material and hit render and you get this result right out of the box. And when loading up Substance Painter on the side, you can see the result is pretty much one-to-one. -one. The only difference is our light intensity, and that's quite easy to address. You would just go in Houdini, go to your lights, and just boost up the exposure a little bit. Maybe let's go uh, 1.3 stops. You can see it gets brighter right away. And this technique is very powerful. So you can have all the versatility in Substance Painter, do all these shaders and all the nice uh, material, smart masking, whatever. In Painter, just hit the export button using the RenderMan plugin and bring it into any DCC you would like. All right, so now let's do the same thing with the metallic shader we exported. So in the preset browser, you can go to your material library, find the shader or material you exported and just double click it. You will then see in your material context that you got a new shader imported. And then all you got to do is hit the IPR render button and your material will start rendering using it. You can see now it's already starting to cook up and you can see we get our nice metallic workflow. We get the nice reflections and everything looks very similar to the one in Substance Painter. The great thing about this workflow is you can go all creative as you want in Substance Painter. Just go to the RenderMan plugin and hit the export material button and then you can load it up in any DCC and get exactly the same result. It's a very nice and straightforward workflow and very easy to use. Now I want to show you the power of the Llama shading networks. The very beauty of this is it's a very modular shading network. So let's just start off with a simple diffuse material. So just create a Llama diffuse and hook it into your output collect, just like that. And you get a simple diffuse material. You can see the default is a neutral gray and you can see it's quite easily and it's working just as nice. So let's imagine we want to add a specular component, like a specular lobe on that. All we have to do is create a Llama dielectric and hook it up using the Llama layer. And that's quite easy to do. You, you just connect the diffuse to the base and then the dielectric to the top and hook that up into your output shader. And then you will see that you get a dielectric layer on top. And obviously you can always change your roughness values. You can be very flexible. It has very um, advanced settings, anisotropy, dispersion, um, interior scattering. So all the fancy stuff is available for the Llama dielectric. So now let's imagine we want to create a conductor material, some kind of metal. So all we have to do is create a Llama conductor and then just hook it up into a shader and you will see that your material is now converted to a conductor material and the preset is like a gold material. 
But obviously now we lost our flexibility with the previous network. So what you can do is you can hook them up together. So you can, first of all, create a Pixar metallic workflow, which is very handy because um, with that, you can hook up um, the basic substance painted textures quite easily. So how it works, you hook up the dedicated outputs to the dedicated um, lobes. So result diffuse will go into the color of the diffuse slot. And then you have specular face color, which will go to reflectivity. And you've got specular edge color, which will go to the edge color, obviously. And now you have this option here to control the metallicness with the slider. And as soon as I enable the metallic option, you will see that our shader gets metallic. Right now, if I disable metallic, you will not get our diffuse component. So what you need to do here is create a little mix. So we are mixing now our two different lobes, which is our diffused electric specular shader. And then I can use the mix of these two materials and I can drive the mix attribute using the metallic setting. So I can just copy this and paste it as a relative reference over. And now my material is dynamic because when I now switch it to be a metallic, it will still switch over to the conductor. And if I disable this, it should switch to the dielectric material and you can see the same blue is applied. So all we have to do now is plug in a texture map or any kind of uh, material in our base color. And now we have the freedom to quickly switch oh, to a metallic or to a, um, a dielectric material. Now what we can also do, which is super nice, we can obviously go into the conductor, we can change the roughness of our base, met of our base metal. But let's say we want to create another specular lobe on top of this. All we have to do is create another dielectric and repeat the process as before. All we do is a llama layer, hook it up into our um, after our layer mix. This is our base. And then the second dielectric goes on to the top. And now you can see that our metal is coated with a nice uh, clear coat material. And this is the beauty of the Llama Shading Network. This was just a very brief introduction, but you can already see how modular this is. And this is not an Uber shader, it's a modular shader. So you can make a shading network as complex as possible for your needs. It's very flexible and very powerful. So make sure to check it out and have fun with the Llama Shading Networks. Thank you so much for watching and be sure to have that notification bell turned on to always keep up to date with my new Renderman content. Mm -hmm.